Hi, welcome back to A-Frame Woodworking. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but this video today comes from a couple of questions I got, both on Instagram and my Facebook account. Uh, I posted a couple pictures of a real simple jig that I was using to flatten a larger slab for a coffee table. Uh, so I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes here and show you this quick, simple setup for how to flatten a much larger slab than maybe your planer, or maybe you don't even have a planer, uh, can handle. For this project, I've just used a couple pieces of scrap, a uh, two by three that I had on hand, a couple rippings of some plywood. I have a base that I've uh, used to dish out the bottoms of seats, and I can also use this little base plate for my router. Uh, and this jig to go ahead and flatten the top. So I'm just going to walk you through real quick. I'm not going to show you how to build all these pieces. I'm just going to show you what I've used to flatten the top of this larger pine slab that's going to be turned into a coffee table. Uh, again, this piece is somewhere in the 17 to 18 range. I can plane up to 13 inches in my planer. It also had a little bit of a twist in it. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and at least get one surface flattened. And I'll walk you through the real basics for how to get a larger slab flattened using a handheld router. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through this basic setup. Again, there's, there's probably a hundred different ways to do this. Uh, I just had one slab to do. I don't do a ton of work in slabs, although I'd like to do uh, more with the slab material. Um, so what I came up with was a really simple technique for getting this flat, close to flat. This isn't gonna be dead flat, um, like coming out of a, a planer. You're going to have some of the router marks. You're going to have to go back with a smoothing plane, uh, sander, whatever you have to get this flat. Again, this is for the average Joe here. Um, what I've done is I've put this on one of my MDF work tables that I know is pretty flat. And I had some scrap pretty straight 2x3s. You can pretty much use whatever you have. You can glue up plywood. Uh, if you have some uh, 6 quarter, 8 quarter stock. I just had some 2x3s. So before I put these on here, I went ahead and cut them to my rough length and then I did run them over the joiner and then rip them so they're both the same uh, width. And then when I put these down in, I raise it up a little bit just with some scraps and when I put my slab in here, right now this is done on both sides, uh, but I put my slab on here and it did have a little bit of a twist. So one side was higher than the other. I think it was the opposite corners were a little bit higher. You want to go ahead and stabilize those just with some regular shims that you can get at your local home center. And just go ahead and shim those so that you have a, the same thickness throughout. So when you go ahead and mill this, you're getting one dead flat surface. Then when you flip it over, it'll take the other material off. Um, I think I only took about maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. This was an air dried slab, so I didn't have to take too much off of it. Then, it's very similar to a CNC machine when you're working with three different axes. So what I did was got this thing down to where I wanted it, and then I just put one clamp on the edge just to get the majority of the surface smooth and to have it secure on the table. Then I simply made a, a cradle for my router. It consists of two rails and I put an end piece on it and then also another piece so that it doesn't slide off my, uh, my rails on this side. And now I have the ability to move this the whole length of my material. I probably could have made this a little bit uh, longer on my rails to get the ends, but I simply adjusted as I went along. I made a different base plate for my router um, there's many different ways you can make this cradle. Some people make a uh, like a runner underneath the whole bottom so that just this edge of the base plate sits down in that cradle and goes along. I had this one made for another jig uh, that scooped out the bottom of seats. I actually think I borrowed this from, uh, I'm not sure, maybe Woodsmith Magazine did, did a base plate like this. I've used this for a couple of different applications. Um, I have this on a Porter cable router. Just go ahead and drill your holes. Make sure you have a big enough opening for your router bit. Uh, I had a three quarter inch router bit that I use for this. If you have something larger, just make sure you have enough clearance so that you're not hitting your base plate. And then I have dowels that really make this uh, run pretty smoothly without a lot of friction. 
This goes into the cradle, and then it runs on the dowels. And I went ahead and waxed those uh, just so it runs nice and smoothly. And then I tried to find my highest spot first on my board, and then I simply adjusted the depth of my router so that it was taking off a small amount first so that I wasn't hogging off you know, an eighth or a quarter of an inch. And then it's simply a matter of adjusting your height. And then I just started at one end, turned on the router, and holding on to my base, because this will allow me to go uh, left and right. And then I simply just feed the router across and just take passes like that the whole length of my piece, um, keeping it secured down to the table. Once I got to the end, uh, went ahead and adjusted my depth. And I just took small amounts of material off because I didn't want to blow out any of the top. And then I can go back through, flip it over, and do the backside. Well, that concludes this quick little overview. Uh, I know this was a brief lesson. I didn't get into a lot of details. Uh, but as you can see, it took this pine board. It really didn't take me that long to flatten both of these sides. I know if you think you're taking a three-quarter inch bit across this whole board, I think this is a 48 inch long board, it would take a long time to do. I think in less than an hour, I had both sides relatively flat and ready to move on to uh, hand planing using my smoothing plane and then sanding this so it will be ready to attach. Uh, the sides come out pretty nice. As you can see, it's relatively flat on both sides. Pretty simple technique. Use what you have on hand to make this jig. Uh, taking the time to set up the jig will save you cost and, uh, and time making mistakes or trying to figure out how to do it later. If you want more detailed information or you would like to uh, see exactly how I, I set this jig up or if you have more questions, feel free to contact me through, um, I have a Facebook account, Instagram account, Twitter. Uh, my website's www.aframewoodworking.com. Hit up the contact page, send me an email. I'll be happy to uh, give you more information or guidance on how I got these slabs flat. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.